Hi, right, today I'm going to show you how power tool manufacturers uh, alter the insides of their batteries uh, without letting their users know that that have, has been done and how this affects end users. So today we're going to review the C9360 uh, 36 volt battery pack for the Dewalt power tools. Um, this one was made in 06 and contains the original uh, A123 systems. Um, let's see if I can focus on this. A123 system cells, and those are, I believe, are called M1 cells. They're uh, 23 uh, millimeters in diameter, and uh, they're 2.3 amp hour cells, and they can develop up to 140, or I believe 120 or 140 amps uh, short uh, circuit current, and uh, about 70 amps continuous current. Those are very powerful cells. Um, I I can't really speculate on the cost of manufacturing, but I assume the cells are probably maybe uh, eight dollars a piece or so. So the battery probably cost maybe a hundred, to hundred twenty bucks to make. Um, again, it, you can be I'd say anywhere from eighty to hundred twenty dollars to make, and they sell for two hundred dollars here in Canada. So this is again, like I said, this is made in 06, 49th week of uh, 06, and um, uh, this those cells are rated at uh, 2,000 uh, charge discharge cycles. What that means is if you charge this battery fully 2,000 times and discharge it 2,000 times, um, you will lose about 20% of uh, initial capacity. So you'll go from 2.3 amp hours uh, per cell to uh, uh, 1.9 something like that. Um, each one of those cells um, is uh, connected in series and um, each one is uh, 3.6 volts so you get 10 cells in series you get 36 volts um, and this is really nice battery this is made in 06 and uh, I've been using it since pretty much daily and uh, it, I don't feel any capacity loss compared to 2010 made batteries for example so this is really really high-end high quality uh, futuristic battery so to speak and now let's take a look at batteries that are made in 2011 so this is the cover from a new battery made in 2011, second week, and let's look at the cells that are in it. And we can see they're clearly not exact same cells, and these are Samsung's uh, IFR 186511Q. Uh, there is another user on uh, RC Groups who uh, RC Groups forum um, who opened one, who found one of those, and his cells are IFR 18650. 11p. Um, uh, I haven't found any data sheets for those, but there is very limited information about 11p on Samsung's website. Website it's uh, SDI SamsungSDI.com, I believe, and um, they are rated 1.1 uh, amp hours per cell. There is a total of 20 cells here, uh, 10 cells in series, and uh, two packs of 10 cells in parallel. So that gives you 2.2 amp hours. So the new battery has one. 0.1 amp hour less capacity than the old battery. This might not be very significant because 2.3 is nominal capacity, or sorry, uh, maximum capacity of those cells. So if you do use it uh, with a really high discharge current, such as in a grinder or a drill at low RPM drilling big holes with auger bits, uh, then you probably won't get uh, 2.3 amp hours. But such rule applies to this battery as well. So uh, basically, case in point. Uh, the old battery has higher capacity than the new battery, not significantly, but still higher. Um, also, just based on other previous Samsung cells and tests by, uh, test by uh, users on uh, Endosphere and uh, RC Group's forums, uh, these things have mm, under, I'd say, under a thousand charge discharge cycles life. So they also have half the cycle life of all of A123 based batteries. So uh, these things can also do, again, very limited information, but based on previous models, uh, they are um, probably 10, maybe 15 amps per cell maximum discharge current. So this battery is also less powerful. I, I can guarantee it's less powerful than the older one, that's for sure. How much, I can't really tell right now, but I, would, I, would, I can speculate significantly less. Um, uh, what else? Um, Construction wise it's pretty much the same. Um, if you look at the BMS here, you can see maybe let's see if you can see. It's a cell equals phosphate. 
So those are also iron phosphate cells, which is good news, meaning uh, they, they will have higher than uh, normal lithium ion discharge currents and a little bit higher cycle life, um, which remains to be seen how well they perform and how well they perform in cold or hot weather. Um, the, the charge rate, uh, recommend the charge rate for those is uh, 0.5 C, meaning uh, they typically should be charged at um, uh, 550 milliamps per cell, um, which gives you, you know, your whatever, uh, two hour charge. Uh, so the wall charges them in one hour. Actually, I haven't measured the charge time, but the, it's supposed to be one hour charger. So um, they obviously charge them at 1.1, which uh, again, if you charge them at 1.1 amps, uh, you are reducing the battery of the cell alive uh, because the cell itself is not spec to be charged at high, that high of a rate. A1 to 3 can be charged at ridiculous rates. We're talking about several amps uh, without significant da without well any noticeable damage, so to speak. So um, um, they're just lower quality batteries. I don't know what the price is going to be like. I haven't bought individual batteries yet, but I assume price will be the same as old A123 based, but uh, the end result is you're getting a crappier battery uh, with lower capacity, lower cycle life, uh, probably worse uh, cold weather performance for the same money. So thanks to Walt for screwing your user base and uh, you know Milwaukee is looking better and better every day, especially given that they changed their battery uh, cell suppliers three times and right now they're I believe they're stuck with um, red Sanyo cells, which uh, just based on the very limited spec sheet information are much better than those Samsungs. So um, we'll see what happens, and uh, but I, I definitely won't be. I'm sure. I'm sure I won't be buying those batteries anymore. I'll just stick to my old uh, nanophosphate A1 to 3 based batteries, and uh, maybe in the nearest future I'll be ditching my whole uh, toolkit on eBay. So thanks to Walt.